just a little fun fact about these pickled beets. They're just a simple can of beets that I picked up from Walmart, but they do have two kinds. They have one that's plain and they have one that's pickled. And believe it or not, the pickled actually have less sodium. They have 62% less sodium, or well, 62% of the sodium that the plain beets do. So if you like pickled beets, that's good news for you. May I help you, baby girl? Mwah. <laughs> Miss Emily doesn't like salad, but she sure likes to be under mommy's feet. <laughs> you see birdies on the feeder up there? I will say that the pickled beets and the olives definitely don't help my goal to reduce my sodium content. However, I have done so well with all of my other dishes that this little bit I'm not worried about. Um, if you are someone who, you know, has had some heart issues and really very much desperately need to cut the sodium, I would maybe advise against it. But for everyone else, I mean, if your sodium content is low everywhere else throughout your day, I don't think this will hurt too much. Again, when it comes to heart health and you're on a low fat, low sodium, uh, diet, I would leave off the walnuts and just do the hemp seeds because they both are a source of omega-3 fatty acids, but this one is low fat. And I use the new salt salt substitute for the, basically for the saltiness of the salad. Um, I will say though, the new salt is potassium salt. So again, sometimes when you have heart issues, uh, if you're like on high blood pressure medicine and things like that, um, a lot of those people tend to also have issues with their potassium levels being too high. And if that's the case, then you would not want to use this. And unfortunately it does take quite a bit of it to get the same saltiness as regular table salt. And there's lots of ways you can make dressing for these salads. There's a really great balsamic vinaigrette that uses mustard, balsamic vinegar, some garlic powder, a little bit of vegetable broth, but I just like to keep things simple. And so for me, I drizzle on just a little bit of maple syrup to kind of help cut the tang of the vinegar. And then I dash on some red wine vinegar, just because that's my personal preference. Balsamic is um, a great option for activating the nitric oxide in the greens. Um, however, I do prefer the flavor of the red wine vinegar, so I often use that instead. So I made this dish a couple of days ago and I always like to make a big pot of something that way I don't have to cook every single time I want food. I can just eat leftovers, but I made it with no salt at all and it is low sodium vegetable broth and then no salt added um, beans and then I added uh, carrots and sweet potato, quinoa and collard greens, all of which were fresh. So I just cut them up and put them in. Um, so there was no salt in any of those either. So I made it completely salt free with that, with the exception of the, what was in the broth. Um, so now that I'm ready to eat it, I'm going to add just a pinch of sea salt, just enough to give it a little flavor without over salting it.
<laughs> I like the way you eat there, buddy. Can't even be bothered to stand up, huh? Come here. He's fine. Hi, Henri. Good morning. I have made it to my mom and stepdad's house and I have them seated behind you so I can go over some information with them, but also have it on here for you as well. I apologize. I realized after I got here that I completely forgot my microphone, so we're just going to wing it. So hopefully I don't sound too crazy on here and echoey. Um, so I've got a stack of books that I'm going to go over. And uh, the most important stuff is all of the kind of nutritional information that I brought along. So we will start with that and then I'll move on to the books. So um, we've talked a lot about all of the different nutritional things. We have you guys kind of on a plan. We have meal plans and everything set out. So I wanted to just kind of go over some of the specifics about some supplements that I want you to take and why. Um, so I made a little list of notes. I'm gonna start with homocysteine and homocysteine is a component, it's an amino acid that is actually harmful to the body. So it's one that you want to suppress. And um, in order to do that, so it's one of those things that it can lead to things like heart disease, renal failure, it's even been attributed to depression. So in order to suppress that, you want folic acid and you want B12. Folic acid, you're fine, you're getting that from all your greens anyway. B12 is a common one that the entire population of the United States is low on. Like everybody really needs to be supplementing B12. So that is one of the ones that I will recommend. And I've got some that I can send you links for and things like that too, like the ones that I use, which I actually use one that's also an iron supplement because uh, just for my hair and nails really. Um, but the thing about B12 is you really only need 25 milligrams a day. And these supplements have 500, 1000, 2500, like way more than you need. So what I usually do is I'll take one every other day. So, and then um, selenium is something else that I want you to have. So it is a good protector for cells and DNA. So, you know, we were talking a little bit earlier about DNA damage. Well, selenium actually helps protect your cells to keep damage from happening in the first place. So it kind of acts a little bit like an antioxidant, except an antioxidant kind of helps repair the cell once it is damaged, whereas selenium helps prevent it to begin with. And the best way to get that in the diet is a Brazil nut. And for, you know, someone with heart issues, I would not recommend nuts, but a Brazil nut is like the one exception to that because you're only going to take one or in your case, two a day because you're a man. So you're bigger. Like for a smaller woman like myself, I would only do one because you can't overdo selenium and end up with selenium toxicity. So you don't want to just like eat a handful of them. Um, and then adaptogens is something else because it's going to help um, your body achieve homeostasis, which is essentially like a balancing of your hormones. So it's gonna help reduce cortisol stress levels and it's gonna help your body be able to make serotonin. And then the other thing about serotonin too is 90% of it is actually made in your gut, which one of these books goes over that too. Um, so when you do switch to a plant-based diet, you're naturally gonna produce more serotonin from your gut like you're supposed to because all of those bad gut bacteria are kind of wiped out and depleted. So that's gonna help that as well. Um, where to get adaptogens like that? My favorite place is ashwagandha. So, and I think I gave you guys some of that powder and I'll show you how to make an ashwagandha latte. But I like to mix, so there's also a tea that is ashwagandha holy basil. Holy basil is another really good adaptogen. Um, but I like to be able to make my own adaptogen latte and it's kind of an adaptogen antioxidant latte because it also has turmeric and ginger and cinnamon and then I sweeten it with a little maple syrup. And actually it was earlier on the same video when I did my what I eat in a day, it was at the end of that. So that is exactly what I'm talking about. Oh, let's see, we did talk a little bit about replacing oil and cooking, um, but just for those of you watching, it's, that's one of the hardest things when you're switching to a whole food plant-based diet because everyone is so conditioned to, I need to throw oil in the skillet before I do anything else. And so it's a pretty simple switch. You just stop using the oil, you pour in a splash of some low sodium vegetable broth instead, and then you just continue adding a little splash every so often as needed to deglaze while you're sauteing. Usually it's onion, you know, that you start with. Um, and then if you're doing a baked good, then you want to do a measure for measure, one to one ratio. However much oil the recipe calls for, you just replace it with applesauce and that will get you the same thing. Um, some pantry and fridge and freezer staples. I've kind of helped you guys a little bit with that, but just to kind of, because I know that's going to be a question that people have a lot. So things that I keep in my pantry all the time, 
I have different seeds. So I have flax seed, chia seed, hemp seed. The significance with those three is they're high in omega-3 fatty acids. So yes, you can get omega-3s outside of fish that are actually much healthier than fish because they come without the saturated fat, they come without the cholesterol, they come without the toxins, the mercury, the PCBs, microplastics, all of that stuff you don't have to worry about. Whole grains, so whole wheat pastas, brown and wild rice, um, oats, sourdough bread. I get the not the stuff that you buy in a loaf from Walmart, but like real homemade, fresh sourdough bread. And I know in some small towns that can be hard to access. Here in the town where my mom and stepdad live is a good example of that. I had to bring them some up from the town that I live in, which is about, oh, four times, four or five times bigger. <coughs> so those are my go-tos for grains. Um, I always have beans. I have some dried beans and then I also keep no salt added beans as well, just cans that I can open up because they're quicker that way. Um, and on that same note, I will always have some no salt added, whether it's tomato sauce, diced tomatoes, tomato paste. I keep that stuff around too because those are the roots of a lot of the cooking that I do. And then obviously low sodium vegetable broth, I could not survive without that in my pantry. <coughs> and then also um, dried fruit is a good snack. However, you need to look at the package because the vast majority of the time, they add sugar to dried fruit. So always look for that. I find if you just go to Walmart and look at the dried fruit, you're probably not gonna find anything. But I've gone into TJ Maxx and I have actually found dried fruit that does not have sugar. So you would be surprised at the places you might come across it. Um, as far as fridge and freezer staples, I always have greens. I always have broccoli or cabbage or both usually, honestly, but that is, so your cabbage family. So broccoli, cauliflower, kale, Brussels sprouts, all of those things are cruciferous vegetables and they're cancer fighters. So I always keep those around in my fridge. Frozen berries, fresh fruits and vegetables of other kinds, um, plant milks, I always have almond and oat milk, and then um, onion and garlic. So those are kind of my fridge and freezer staples. Um, and then to continue on with the supplements, I've covered B12, I've covered selenium with the Brazil nut. The only other things that I would recommend, especially this time of year, vitamin D. It was in one of my last videos, but you're not getting outside that much. I would do okay. usually a thousand IUs is a dose. I would do two, maybe even three for you. Make sure you've got plenty until it's warm enough to be outside in the sun. Um, and then I don't know for you that you'll really need this because it looked like your calcium levels were fine. For most women, I would also recommend a vegan calcium supplement because if you're not careful, if you just go to Walmart and grab a calcium supplement, it's usually not vegan. It's gonna be animal sourced and you don't want that because that is pro-inflammatory. So only get the vegan source calcium supplements. But I personally take just a half dose. I don't take the full dose because I am getting calcium from greens and beans and all the stuff that I eat all the time. Um, but just because I'm, you know, pre the menopausal age, um, but even like as you're going through menopause and get older into life and you're concerned about osteoporosis, I will give you a hint. If you are whole food plant-based, you probably will never have to worry about osteoporosis, but um, just kind of better to take those preventive measures and take yourself a calcium supplement. Not going to hurt anything. Last thing I want to go over is pretty simple. Look up the app Daily Dozen. It's by Dr. Michael Greger. And I have shared this before, but I will throw um, just a little screen snippet of it up on here. Um, but it has his daily dozen different categories and how many servings of each one is recommended for being on a whole food plant-based diet. And don't worry about checking every single box every single day. It's almost impossible. I never even managed to do it. Um, for one thing, there's three servings of beans. I usually eat a serving of beans at lunch and dinner. So I never hardly get three unless I do like hummus for my afternoon snack. Um, but I will show you guys that too. And you can even just write it down. So you have something to reference if you don't want to have to use an app and check it off every day. So that'll, it's just kind of a guide to help you remember what you should be eating. So don't yeah. get too like, oh shit, I didn't make it today. Don't worry about it. You get most of them, you're doing good. So, um, but that is the chat for that. <clears throat> and then I thought I would share some books that I keep in my personal library that I've actually brought for them to just have and kind of go over. First one is not a nutrition book at all. Um, this is Atomic Habits. Um, some of this is science-based. Some of it I feel like is more opinion-based. It doesn't matter though, because all of the methods in here and the recommendations in here work. There are a couple of things specifically that I have kind of taken on 
Um, for one thing, the idea or the concept of when you identify with something, you become that thing. That has helped me in a lot of situations as well. So just for being able to change your habits, this is a good resource. Prevent and reverse heart disease. I've already given them, given them this one a couple of days ago. But this is um, Dr. Caldwell Esselstyn. There is a talk of his that I linked a couple videos back. It's basically that same talk in print, but it's all about what you need to do to, well, prevent and reverse heart disease. The disease delusion, it covers just kind of a gamut of things for whole food, plant-based eating and how it connects to uh, diet. So my specialty has always been the link between diet and disease. That is specifically why I do um, holistic nutrition and plant-based nutrition. Eat to Live is kind of another one of those same books. It covers just a gamut of things. It's really good informational material to have around. Fiber Fueled is a newer favorite. It's been out for a couple of years now. Dr. Will Bolsowitz wrote this. Um, follow him on Instagram as well. He's a fantastic resource, but he is a gastrointestinal doctor. And so this covers all of the things about your gut microbiota, fiber, obviously, and how it helps the different bacteria that are in your gut microbiome. So if you're someone who deals with digestive issues, IBS, things like that, this is going to be a godsend for you. And then how not to die. One of my favorite doctors ever, Dr. Michael Greger. <laughs> and so this book covers a lot of different things. So it'll say like how not to die from heart disease, how not to die from cancer. Like it covers all of that stuff in here. Um, the honest solution to all of that is be on a whole food plant-based diet, but there's also certain little things that you want to do just slightly differently, depending on whatever it is that your issue is, whether it's digestive or heart or diabetes or whatever the case may be. Fantastic resource as well. And then to accompany that, we have the how not to die cookbook because, and I think this is maybe a complaint of his. He doesn't necessarily complain, but just I, some of the way I've heard him say it in the past, I think he gets kind of annoyed about the fact that everybody always wants recipes in his books. So every time he does a book, he feels like he has to add recipes to it. But good resource if you are very new to plant-based cooking, don't know what the hell you're doing. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So any of the cookbooks and recipes are helpful to have to get you started. And on that note, this is a magazine that comes out, I believe it's seasonal. So you'll have like fall, winter, spring, summer. So for a year, um, I buy them personally. You can order them on Amazon and they come directly from Forks Over Knives. They are eight or $9 a piece. But if you have access to a library, which I do, download the Libby app and your library usually will have um, subscriptions to all of the different magazines and this is one of them. So you do not have to buy them anymore. You can download them from your library through the Libby app. Um, if you don't want to look at it on a little bitty phone screen, use it on your computer, your tablet. You can download the app on all these different uh, sources and have a bigger screen to look at, but all of those recipes. And there's always some little stories about people who've had some serious issues like disease and stuff that have overcome it or even just weight loss. So there's always kind of some inspirational stories in here too, but tons of recipes. And the benefit to Forks Over Knives, you're gonna find a lot of plant-based stuff that's like focused on being vegan, right? So it's not necessarily gonna be oil-free. It's not necessarily gonna be low sodium. This will always be. So it's kind of the champion. If you've never seen the documentary Forks Over Knives, please watch it. It is the champion of getting the ball rolling on whole food plant-based diet. I am going to get that DVD for you guys. I can check it out from the Cape Library. I just haven't, I'll be there tomorrow. So I got to pick up two books, but so I'll check it out then and then I'll bring it up for you guys to watch. So um, anyway, that is the good thing is it's always going to be whole food plant-based. And then the acronym is no SOS, which means no salt, oil, or sugar. So that's the best part about these is you can go line for line on the recipe and you don't have to worry about substitutions. So, and that is my chat. I'll discuss probably some more with them, but for anyone watching, if you have any questions about anything I've said or any additional questions that I didn't cover, please feel free to ask. I'm always happy to help in any way that I can. So that is going to wrap it up for this vlog. And again, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Otherwise I will see you next time.